What's up everybody? Excel dude coming at you again. Today we're going to talk about how to do a t-test in Excel. It's a pretty quick and easy process, but we're going to run through some of the old stuff, some of the new stuff, how you might want to calibrate it, and the easiest way to do it that ignores all that nonsense. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, bottom right hand corner, I'd appreciate it. It helps keep this mullet long, luscious, and lethal. Jumping on in, the way we used to do it is this. Well, first, what is a t-test? Basically, we're taking two sets of data, this one and this one, and we want to see if the mean is different, or the average is different, and if so, is it uh, statistically significant? So there's a couple different t-tests you can do. There, the one we're going to do and focus on here is the related t-test, and that's basically if data comes from the same group, um, kind of a comparison test, if you will. So think about it this way. We've got an NBA uh, player roster here. So these, these players, we have, what, 13 of them. And we want to see if the best two years, the average um, there, let's say, is much different than the average here, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe that's not the best necessarily, but regardless. It's, uh, it's a set of data, and we want to see if the means are roughly equivalent. Okay. So what we're going to do first, the old way we used to do it, is equals t test. You see that this is an older function. It's got that warning label on it. So this was 2007 and earlier, and there was probability associated with the student's t test. So we'll use it. Why not? We pick our arrays. There's our first one, comma. There's our second one, comma, and tails. Is it a one-tailed test? Is it a two-tailed test? The difference being, we're thinking about skew right here. And what I mean by that is, is there a direction that this data is going to go? Um, is the, uh, will the result bias to the upside, the downside, that kind of thing? Um, in this case, that would be a, or if we think it's going to bias one way, it'll be a one-tailed distribution. If we don't know, or we think it could be a different type, maybe it can go either way, we'll do a two-tailed distribution. So we're going to do a two. That's more standard anyway. And right here, it's a paired test because the data is from the same sample. One, close parentheses, hit enter. There's our p-value, so our probability value right there. Then we use that new function equals t dot test, same thing. Honestly, they didn't even change the inputs. If you can run the other one, you can run this one, likely much better than me. Two-tailed test, we hit two, and it's paired, so we're going to do one, close it up, and the result's the same. Gosh darn it. Now we're going to do something where it's going to do a lot of the work for us. And we ran over this in a couple other videos, but we'll do this file, options, and then we're going to go to add-ins. Then you hit go, and you need this analysis tool pack right here. Click that, hit OK, and there it is. All we'll do here, data tab, go to data analysis. Then you'll scroll down until, normally we would go to regression, something like that, if we were doing that. You can do different things here, rank percentile, all that, good old F-test for two sample variances. But instead of having to do regression, pull that stuff out, no, no. It's a paired two sample for means. Perfect. It's almost like it's built for what we're doing, because it is. Hit OK. And then we get our data here. I was playing around with it earlier, so ignore all that, ignore that. All right. So here's how it defaults to you. You get blanks everywhere. Alpha is at 0.05. That means we're looking for 95% confidence intervals. So two-tailed test, 95% confidence intervals. We'll have, what, two standard deviations on each side from the mean, that kind of thing. So variable one range. Again, we just the same way, highlight it, except I'm just going to grab it all. I don't care. I'd like it. Why not? Variable two will do the same thing. And the only difference is, check that labels box. Doesn't matter. Because with all of these data analysis functions, you really need just numeric data. The labels will skill or screw you up unless you check that box. So just hit it, you're good. Or you can leave them off and just select the other ones. And normally, you'll hit OK. It'll give you a new worksheet with all that info on it. I don't want that. I want it to be on this page. Click Output Range in the box. Let's put it there. And hit OK. And here it is. We've got our averages, or means. We have the variance. We have the observations. Pearson correlation coefficient, okay, or roughly r squared, something like that. But hypothesized mean difference, degrees of freedom, your t-stat, one tail, 
critical. And gosh darn it, is that not just the exact same thing as we got right here? But instead of having to do all this other analysis, Excel did it for us. And it knew what we were focusing on, so it gave us all the relevant variables right here. And guess what? That's it. We've done our t-test. You can do it in Excel. And if you liked this one, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.